Hi, and welcome to this video on how to break out of isolation with Change Company. Hi, my name is Eric, and uh, this video, the inspiration for this video came, well, basically this afternoon, I was working on a customer that on the customer card wanted to have information about this customer, but from another company. Uh, so when we're working in, in Business Central, let me show, we got a Business Central here. We have the concept of company and company is, is a very self-contained isolated unit. In this case, I have two companies in, in my database, one called Cronus and one called my company. And uh, what, whenever we are working, we're always in the company and we don't have to worry about, oh, do I get data from somewhere else or do I only need to get the customers that are in this company? We're always confined inside the company. Um, to get out of the company, we did need to do something special. And uh, as the title of the video kind of showed you, that special thing is called change company. So let me show you how that works. So in this case, I have a trigger so I let me create a variable customer record uh, customer and I'll do customer find first and then message uh, let's just do customer name that's awesome piece of code let me deploy that and I get a datum corporation, which is the first customer. So not very surprising, but let's change this a bit. So what we can do now is that we can do customer dot change company, and then say that this should be my company instead. That was the name of the other company. So let me Compile this one again, see how it goes. Now it says customer in the other company. So how is that? So let's do a alt T and or go into the other company. And we get it again because it was on the open page. And we can see that in here I just created two customers. And um, the first one is called customer in the other company. So clearly by doing change company and then the name of the company, we are suddenly this variable is in the other company. So let's just do a customer two record customer here and we will do a customer two find first and then Let's do something like this versus this. So this one versus this one, customer two dot name. So now I have two records. I have customer and I have customer two. I have changed company on customer. I have not changed company on customer two. I deploy this. And now it says customer in the other company versus customer in the other company. So why is that? Well, that's because we ended the session here in the other company. So now we need to actually for this to make any sense, let's switch back to being in Kronos Canada. And now customer in the other company versus a data corporation. So one record variable is in one company and the other record variable is in the other company. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, so if you have a process, so, so what, what we, we could actually, let's, let's, let's do one more thing here. So if I create a variable called company, and then we can say if uh, find set, oh, sorry. If company find set, repeat, go down here until, whoa, until company next equals zero. And then instead of, 
let's get rid of company two, yeah, customer two, just to make this less confusing. So instead of us changing into the hard coded name, then let's just do company. Wow, if I'm able to spell company dot name here. So now we're looping. Let's just indent this. Get this. So now we're looping through all the companies. We're changing the customer record and then finding the first one. So hopefully this should give us two messages. A datum and customer in the other company. Meaning that we're using company name from the company record to switch. Uh, one important thing about this, let's go into companies here. We can see that there's a name and then there's a display name. All of this is all, always using name. Display name is kind of dangerous because we, we could go in and say that uh, this one is called my company and this one is called Kronos Canada in Incorporated and then you know what nobody can figure it out so be aware that I'll actually delete this before it completely confuses my confuses me later in this video uh, so we're always always using the primary key called name we can also see that if we look at here that this is name is the primary key so that's pretty cool and it's cool enough that we can we can go in and say let let's so so what i find quite often is actually i need to uh, i need to do something like this but i need to as what i did this afternoon i need to make sure that uh, i set a filter on name saying different from percent one and then I grabbed the so there's a global function called company name so company name returns the name of the company you're currently in so now we're setting a filter on the company table saying that gives all the companies but the one we're in So we get customer in the other company and that's it because now we're only looking at the other things. Um, so that's kind of interesting, um, but there is a, a, a slight problem with this um, and is that change company is not a a scope based um, kind of function, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, think about this. So if I do customer dot validate um, customer posting group, then custom posting group has some validation code. Um, and in the validation code, there might be other variables. So even though that we have changed the company on customer, the scope beneath is not necessarily changed. So, so it's really, really easy to get into trouble uh, with this. Uh, if you think, oh, now I have changed companies. So everything that is called as part of company will have the same uh, change company. That's not the case. Uh, so, so even though that it seems easy at first, be aware that this is only on this level. So if you need to do processing in other tables, you need to create function that change company and do all the processing in them also. Um, Again, it's not really a big deal. So, so the the stuff I did, uh, 
this afternoon involves a lot of custom tables, but but basically it turned into this 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 loop. So let's look in the other companies and see what what's the balance of this customer. What 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 is, is the status of this customer in another company? Um, if you want to do execute uh, code in another company then it gets a bit more complicated it used to be almost impossible there in back in the the nav days there were tons of way people was running what is called the the the, the nav application server the nas and had run running in each company and then you could sign assign workloads to one company from another company and you will then execute in that company and, and so on because like take posting for instance that was really really complicated to do because you couldn't take code unit 12 and all that and 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 change company on everything so so it was there were a lot of strange ways of doing this but we have have we do huh, we have a new way of doing this and let me show you uh, because it's used in exactly one spot in the base app uh, and uh, this is here so let me let me explain what we what so now we're looking at a code unit called the IC inbox outbox subscribers dot code unit dot al. Um, as part of the intercompany functionality, it, there is actually functionality that will you know generate uh, documents and, and and so on in another company, and that's done through the task scheduler. So one very, very, well, I guess not very commonly uh, overviewed, overview, that's the wrong word, commonly overlooked uh, is that you can supply the company name as a parameter to the task scheduler. So you can ask the task scheduler to execute a code unit in another company which mean that you can do anything because you can from that code unit you have scope because you're you're in a new session and the session is in the other company so you can run reports you can do anything but ui uh, and and that's what they do here in the base app so we can see that this is a function that is accept on after insert i see inbox transaction so after a transaction has come in um we can see that they use change company on the IC partner to get that IC partner uh, from that company. Um, and if the IC partner in the receiving company, so this code is running in the sending uh, company that inserts the transaction into the receiving company. And then it looks to see if the IC partner um, from company information. So this company, the sending companies that this gets convoluted, I'm sorry. So in the receiving company, there's an IC partner that represents the sending company and the IC partner uh, record is then changed in so we can get that. And if the IC partner in the receiving company has the auto accept transactions, then the task schedule, task scheduler is sent off to work with the IC inbox outbox subscribers code unit, some parameters and ask to work in the receiving company. So that's pretty cool. So we have customers with tons of uh, tons of companies and and this is now the pattern that we're using so if you want to post something in another company well set it up use change companies to get the data in there then have a code unit that can post or do whatever you want and just shoot the code unit off with the task scheduler 
worked tremendously well. So to repeat, you can break out of the company isolation you have in, and you have two options. One is to uh, you change company on a record so you can read and write um, in in another company, but it's shallow deep. So you cannot really trigger anything because as soon as you trigger, that trigger will end up running in, in, in the company you are at and everything breaks. Uh, but you can use the task scheduler to shoot off business logic in the other company and thereby achieving the ability to post and, and so on. That's it for for change company video. Uh, if you like this video, remember to subscribe and, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you would like me to do a video on. And then, and then until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.